All right, all right, hold on tight and get ready to blast off into a gaming adventure like no other. We're about to spill the beans, spill the tea, and spill all the awesomeness from Team Manu Video Game Maker. So buckle up, folks, because it's time to embark on a roller coaster ride of pure excitement. Now, you might be wondering, what's the big deal? Oh, trust us, this is the moment you've been waiting for, and it's gonna blow your mind. Prepare for a world of epic proportions, where fun and thrills collide in a symphony of pure captivation. Today, we're diving into the first part of our exciting video series. Get ready for a thrilling adventure as we explore new horizons together. But hold on tight, because the fun doesn't end here. Next week, we'll be back with the second part, packed with even more surprises and discoveries. So make sure to stay tuned and keep an eye out for updates. Oh, fellow creators, prepare yourselves for a pixel-packed adventure filled with laughs, fun, and 2D magic. Do you know how these days we're all dazzled by those fancy 3D games with their jaw-dropping graphics and lifelike environments? But guess what? A game doesn't need all those high-res textures and 3D models to be a total blast. Today, we're diving into the wonderful world of creating a 2D game in Manu with this kind of graphics. Are you ready for some pixelated awesomeness? Let's do this. But before we start, we suggest you subscribe to our channel and like this video. If your friends also dream of creating games or want to try their hand at being a developer, share the link to this video with them. We are sure it will be helpful for you. Now, imagine starting a new project in Manu, and what do you see? Camera settings galore. Hold on tight because one of these settings is about to change the game. It's called projection, and we're about to give it a little makeover. Say goodbye to that perspective projection, and hello to the majestic orthographic view. Add a dash of zoom level 10 and add a sprinkle of camera height adjustment and rotation X set to zero, and voila! Our character now struts around like a true 2D star. To create our charismatic 2D character, we're adding a simple plane and spinning it like a disco ball to face the camera. We'll shrink it down just a tad so our character feels comfortable in its own pixelated skin. Here's the secret sauce, friends. Manu's got a super cool snapping feature. And just imagine our objects magnetically attracted to each other, forming a symphony of pixels. Click the middle option of the gizmo, set your custom grid size, and let the snapping party begin. Adjust the character's position with a few gentle drags to the grid, or show off your precision skills in the position settings. Now, our main character's mesh is getting a break. No hard feelings, though. Time to welcome the new kid on the block. Say hello to our new material, basic material for a 2D superstar. And hey, wanna know the easiest way to animate a 2D character? You got it. A sprite sheet containing all the animations. Import one and watch the magic unfold. Just adjust the tiling and offset to show one frame at a time. The color tint and cutout opacity are like spices to customize your character's flavor. Whoops! Our character can move, but there's no animation party yet. Time to throw the biggest animation bash ever. We're creating a new animation called Idle and importing our character into the timeline. Get ready for the animation magic, because it's all about adjusting that texture offset. Bring on the horizontal texture offset U and the vertical offset V, and get those frames sliding. Let's give our character some groove with the second row of the sprite sheet by adding the value of 0.33 to the offset V. Fancy, huh? And to keep the dance going, we're selecting the next horizontal frame every 0.1 seconds by adding the value to origin plus 0.1. Time to hit the dance floor character style. To make this animation come to life, we've got to include it in the idle animation that's already set up in the animation states. It's like adding a secret ingredient to a recipe for awesomeness. Now, we're going to switch things up a bit. Say goodbye to the idle animation of the 3D character, and say hello to the spiffy idle animation of our 2D character. Time to let the 2D star shine. Next up, we need a character with some serious speed. Creating a run animation is as easy as duplicating the idle one, giving it a cool new name, and making just one tweak. It's like giving your character a turbo boost. We'll set the offset V to 0.666 to tap into the first row of the sprite sheet. 
Sounds a bit devilish, doesn't it? But don't worry, we'll keep the offset U as it is, so we get that smooth horizontal flow every 0.1 seconds. Now, let's merge the run animation into the walk animation in the animations for states. It's like watching a seamless dance routine that blends the best of both worlds. Remember, when the character runs, it's all about that high-speed action. But when they're in idle mode, it's time to take a chill pill and enjoy the idle animation. Balance is the key. Oh, but we're not stopping there. Double the fun, double the animations. We'll duplicate the run animation and turn it into a spectacular double jump animation. It's like teaching your character to defy gravity with style. For the offset V value, we're setting it to 1. And as for the offset U value, it's a bit finicky because we want the animation to always start from the first frame. It's like telling your character, hey, you've got to start from square one every time. So to achieve this animation magic, we manually add 9 keys with values 0.1 to 0.9. It's like giving our character a bunch of secret codes to pull off that perfect double jump. Oh, and did I mention the transition between keyframes? We're disabling that bad boy. We don't want any sudden surprises during the double jump routine. Smooth as butter, folks. Now, we could have taken the easy route and just added 0.1 to the origin, but where's the fun in that? We decided to manually set the values because we like a bit of a challenge. It's like telling your character, hey, you've got this, show us what you got. Remember, the first keyframe should always be the first frame in the sprite sheet, which is 0.1. It's like giving your character a reassuring pat on the back before they take the leap. And once again, we're merging the double jump animation into the animations for states. It's like a double jump extravaganza. Twice the fun, twice the action. Oh, don't you worry, our character's got moves for days. Running, jumping, and rolling like a pixel acrobat. It's like watching the Olympics in a 2D universe. Alright, let's take a break from the dance floor and set the stage. Visualize the character's movement with a couple of snazzy tiles. We're making the floor invisible and its position takes the simple planes, ready to face the camera with style. Step 1. We're playing the mad scientist and creating a brand new basic material. It's like concocting a secret sauce for our digital masterpiece. Now, let's spice things up. We're bringing in a fabulous texture to add some flavor to our creation. It's like giving our character a stylish outfit upgrade. But wait, there's more. We've got options, my friend. We could have gone all out and chosen a tile sheet, but just for kicks and giggles, we're going with a single tile texture. Who needs a whole puzzle when you can have just one perfect piece? And guess what? More snapping fun. Duplicate those tiles and place them like puzzle pieces to create a stunning background. You're the Picasso of pixels now. But uh-oh, when our character runs in the opposite direction. Disappearing act, not cool. Time for a character intervention. We set his speed and the horizontal jump speed to 5, his jump height to 1, and the double jump to 2. That said, I want to point out that our task is not to send our character to the stars, but merely to adjust the height of the jump. Our character's running slower, jumping lower, but still having a blast. And who's hiding that character's back? Plain culling, you sneaky trickster. But don't fret, we've got a fix. We duplicate the character, and then we rotate to 180. Drum roll, please. A 180 degree spin. Ta-da! Backside revealed. And just for the grand finale, a flipped version of the sprite sheet for that cool forward roll. Don't forget, but don't feel bad if you need some adjustments in the flipped animations might be needed so the character still rolls forward while performing the double jump. The animations from the duplicated character should also be included to the idle, run, and double jump in the animations for states. Animations are like your personal dance moves. Make them your own. Now, our character's a 2D superstar, strutting in both directions with style and grace. But the fun doesn't stop there. Let's add some tile texture variations to jazz up the level. Options, options, and more options. It's a pixel playground. We've got links in the description to some top-notch creators for those mind-blowing tiles. Time for a construction frenzy! Remove that default door and set static colliders for each block, building blocks, you've got nothing on us. With the snapping feature in Manu, we'll build a level that'll make players go, Wow, I never knew pixels could be this much fun! And there you have it, a pixel-perfect adventure. 
Let your imagination run wild, unleash your creativity, and create a 2D game that'll charm players like never before. So, gather your pixels, put on your game dev hats, and let's rock this 2D wonderland. And with you was the Manu Project team. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can leave your comments and questions below this video. We are happy to respond to your messages. And don't forget that becoming a game creator is easier than you think. See you later.